a helium-filled balloon rises up at a rate of 5 meters per second. The path the balloon takes is an example of a vector because there is both magnitude and a direction given. A wind is blowing at a rate of 10 meters per second from the west. This is also a vector because a magnitude and a direction are given. If the balloon is released in the wind, the combined effect results in a path that represents vector addition, or in different terms, the resultant. We use trigonometry to find the magnitude and direction of the balloon's path if it's released in the wind. An example of vector addition. And so what we're going to learn today is to use diagrams and formulas to help us add vectors and get what we call the resultant or their vector sum. Okay, so that's our objective for today. The formulas that we're going to need, um, distance between two points of the Pythagorean theorem, probably you'll go with the Pythagorean theorem since you're going to be drawing diagrams, um, law of cosines, law of sines, and um, then your right triangle trig if you need that. Um, so just a reminder for law of sines, you'll be how using like sine of angle A over um, side A. Let's try that again. Side A uh, over sine B or equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. So there's your law of sines. Remember, you have to have a pair of opposite values in order to use the law of sines and half of another pair. Or um, you use law of cosines if you don't have any pairs. So like say you want to find side A, but you don't have, uh, and you, but you only have angle A. And you have side B and you have side C, but you don't know anything about A or side A. So that would be an example. This would be a good example of when you're given side angle side. You're going to use the law of cosines. Okay, and then of course you got Sokotoa, and probably the only part of Sokotoa we'll be using is tangent. All right, so a couple things first though before we get started on that is I just want to remind you about a couple things about parallelograms. A lot of you haven't had a lot of exposure to geometry, so just want to talk to you about the, the characteristics um, or the features of a parallelogram. A parallelogram, a rectangle is a parallelogram, for example, a square. Right, parallelogram is a four-sided figure where the opposite sides of the parallelogram are parallel, i.e., well, that's why you call it a parallelogram. So opposite sides are parallel, so we can mark those with these little arrows indicating that they're parallel. Okay, um, opposite sides are also congruent, so they would have the same tick marks here. Um, and that indicates that they're the same size. And not only that, it's not just about sides in a parallelogram. The opposite angles, okay, that are uh, cross diagonals from each other are also um, congruent. They're the same size. So two angles will be the same size. So if this is angle alpha, then this is going to be the same angle alpha, and this would be ang angle beta, and this would be angle beta. Now something else that you have to remember, parallelograms or any four-sided figure, their interior angles add up to 100 and uh, sorry, 360 degrees. So in this case, two alphas plus two betas equals 360 degrees. So that means if I divide everything by two, that alpha plus beta always equals 180 degrees. And that's, that's so we could just make a, a generalized statement here that in a parallelogram, the adjacent angles, alpha and beta, alpha, beta, Alpha, beta, they have a sum of 180 degrees. So that's always useful information. So parallelograms. Okay, so why is that important? Because we're going to talk about the parallelogram law. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of mathematicians use the parallelogram law when they're adding vectors. They're adding two vectors, like you saw, um, if we wanted to find the, the path of the, or the vector of the balloon if we release it in the wind, right? So um, two vectors are acting simultaneously at a point. Okay, so for example, let me just draw a little picture here. So if we have this vector A going this direction, okay, so here's vector A, and it's going off to the east, and then you have this vector, vector B here. And it's going off to the northeast, right? 
and they're acting on this. Their initial points are in the same. They're simultaneously acting on this point right here, their initial point. Okay, you can, two vectors act just simultaneously at a point can be represented both in magnitude and direction by the adjacent sides of a parallelogram drawn from a point, right? Then the resultant vector is represented. Let me figure, let me finish this out actually. So if we're going to make a parallelogram, then vector A would have to be parallel and moved to the um, head of vector B here. So this would be vector A up here and th those would be parallel. And then vector B, we would move here from tail to head. Okay. And so this would be vector B and the resultant. Okay. Is from the diagram is from the, is the diagonal here. So the resultant, then let's just use some, some knowledge here. So if I'm going to add these two forces together, they're working together. One's pulling to the right and one's pulling up and to the right, that the resultant is going to be, be pulling up and to the right. And it's going to be quite a bit longer here. So we would call this the resultant. Okay. And it's represented both in magnitude and direction by the diagonal of the parallelogram passing through that point. And we're talking about this point here. So um, this is parallelogram law. And a lot of times we'll be given this angle right here between vector A and vector B. And then we want to know what is this resultant vector here or the addition of A plus B. I could also write this as vector A plus B if I want to. Um, I'm going to put the word or there. Anyway, I lost my train of thought. So if we'll give this vector A and this vector B and we're given the angle between them possibly. Um, we would need to know what is this vector here or what is this angle here between uh, these two sides. And so we'd have to subtract this angle here from 180 to get that angle so that we could use law of cosines because we'll have side angle side and we'll be able to find the um, side opposite of this new angle that we just found. So we use that a lot when we're using parallelogram law to find a sum, a vector sum or a resultant sum. Okay, so let's take a look at a problem here. So suppose that a person takes four steps east and then three steps north. The sum of the vectors, or sorry, the, yeah, sum of the vectors, is the vector let's let's look at it okay so if we go four steps to the to the east one two three four all right so there's four steps to the east and we're going to point to the east so that's four steps and then we go three steps north so we're going to turn at perpendicular and go three steps north pretend i did three steps there okay the sum of the two vectors is the vector five steps in magnitude so we're looking at this is it right here what's the vector if we're going right and up our sum has to be moving to the right and be moving up and if i were to extend this into a parallelogram you can see that there okay so this is a right angle here which means this is a right angle here right but this is definitely a three four five right triangle right so it's five steps in magnitude the sum of the two vectors is this guy right here at an angle and we have from the horizontal. So wait a second, that's this angle right here. What's that measure? Since we have a right angle here, we don't have to go to law of sines and law of cosines. We can just use right triangle trig. So if I'm looking at this triangle here, because I have all three of these measures, I could use the sine of theta is three fifths or the cosine of theta is four fifths or the tangent of theta is three fifths. Uh, three fourths. I think I'll go ahead and say the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So we'll go theta is equal to tangent inverse three fourths. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll plug that into the calculator really quickly and we'll just round to the nearest tenth. So let me plug that in. We get 36.86. So 36.9 degrees. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Angle is 36.9 degrees from the horizontal. Now, if it said from the vertical, instead of from the angle from the vertical, we would have been looking for this angle here. 
right? And so we would have done tangent of theta is four thirds and found that measure instead. So pay attention to the relative, the relationship between the uh, resultant and the angle that you're comparing it to, uh, the one of the original vectors there. So what is this sum is also called the resultant, and you'll hear me call it that often. That's just usually the term I like to use when I'm talking about adding vectors. Okay, so there you have it. This is finding a resultant or a vector sum. Okay, so let's take a look at an application here, and this does not really have any uh, math to do. It's just a picture that we're going to draw. Two forces, force one and force two, act on an object. So here's my object, okay? Here's my object. Uh, the combined effect, combined effect is the sum or the resultant or the vector of f sub one plus f sub two separate forces. So if I have a force going this direction, so at a northeastern, maybe like 70 degrees, the north 70 degrees east or something like that. And then I have another force going this direction, force, sub, force two, and they're acting on the same object. Then this is pulling to the left and up, and this is pulling to the right and up. But since the force that's pulling to the right and up looks a little longer, our final force or our resulting force should be probably a little more to the right and definitely up. So how do we figure out where to, where is that resultant? Where is that vector sum? What is the vector um, path? What is its path? So if we were to draw this as a parallelogram right here, and my dogs are barking, sorry about that. And then and then we draw from the object to the diagonal of the parallelogram to where the two new vectors that we've drawn or the two parallel vectors that we drew uh, come head to head. This would be the vector f sub 1 plus f sub 2, or in other words, the resultant vector. And when I do that, I'm drawing that right there. And so um, you can see that because my force one was a little bit longer, a little bit more forceful than my force two, and they were both pulling up, and one was pulling to the right and one was pulling to the left, but the force pulling to the right was a little stronger, that my resultant vector or my vector sum was pulling definitely up, but more to the right than to the left. And the parallelogram law helps us to see that really well. Okay. So now let's do some problems. It says here we have an example. Forces of 15 newtons and 25 newtons, and usually newtons are um, indicated with just a capital N here. They act on an object at right angles to each other. So they're pulling, one's pulling maybe to the right and one's pulling up or to the left and up or to the left and down. Okay, find their sum or find the resultant given the magnitude and the resultant at the angle and the angle that it makes with the larger force. So my larger force is 25 and my smaller force is 15. And they're acting on an object. So here's my object. All right. And they're acting at 90 degree angles, at right angles. So I'm going to make this my 25 degree Newton force. And I'm going to make this my 15 Newton force. And actually, I think I'm going to make it look a little bit more realistic into scale here. All right, and they're acting at 90 degree angles. Okay, and so where is the resultant? This is pulling to the right, this is pulling up. So the resultant is going to pull to the right and up, but more to the right. So it's definitely going to pull it out longer than it is going to pull it up tall. So we extend it out by making a rectangle here, but a parallelogram, rectangle is just a parallelogram, right? All right, so we are looking for the resultant vector here. So here is the re resultant vector, okay? All right, so <clears throat> I want to know what is this value right here? What is its magnitude? Because we have to find the magnitude. 
So I'm going to transfer this information up here. And then we also want to find the angle that the resultant makes with the larger force. So here's the larger force. So here's the angle between them, right? So that's the angle that we're looking for. Okay, so Pythagorean theorem, right? If this is 90 degrees, opposite angles, or adjacent angles in a parallelogram add up to 180, right? So if this is 90, this is 90 for sure, okay? <coughs> So we could use right triangle trig to do all of this and the Pythagorean theorem. So we could say, all right, so the absolute value or the magnitude of the resultant squared is equal to 15 squared plus 25 squared. And then take the square root of both of those values. And we'll just go to the nearest tenth here. Maybe we'll go to the nearest hundredth. Nah, tenth, that's fine. Okay. So second square root, 15 squared plus 25 squared, and we get 29.15. And so we're going to say about 29.2 newtons. And so that is our resultant magnitude. So I'm going to write that out. The resultants, the magnitude of the resultant vector is 29.2 newtons. Okay, so you heard me say that. The magnitude of the resultant vector, uh, result, resultant vector is 29.2. Okay, so now we just need to find angle theta. So we have opposite theta, adjacent theta. So I just say, okay, so we're going to use the tangent inverse. So tangent inverse of 15 20 fifths, which we could reduce down to 3 fifths, by the way. So tangent inverse of 3 fifths is 30.96 degrees. And so we're going to say 30.96. We'll round that to the nearest tenth. So that makes that a 10, which makes that carry there. So we're going to say approximately 31.0 degrees. And so um, vector R, the resultant vector, has a magnitude of 29.2 newtons. And makes a 31 degree angle with the larger force. Sorry about that little error there. That angle with looks like angle will, I don't know what that says. Angle with the larger force. And there you have the solution to that using your right triangle trick okay all right so here let's move on to example three it says magnitudes of vectors u and v and the angle theta between the vectors are given find the sum of a vector u plus v given the magnitude to the nearest tenth and give the direction by specifying to the nearest degree the angle makes with u all right so we want to know uh, the resultant angles the resultant angle with angle u what's their relationship okay and the magnitude to the nearest tenth okay so we have vector u's magnitude is 45 and vector v's magnitude is 30 and the angle between them is 90 degrees so we draw vector u 45 and vector v 30 so here's u Here's V, okay, and they're acting at 90 degrees. There's an angle between the two vectors. When you draw the angle between the two vectors, make sure you're drawing the vectors, their initial points touching, right, like I've been doing, okay? And so we'll extend that out so that we can find the resultant vector. So there's your two parallel vectors. So here is vector U plus v. This is what we're looking for, its magnitude, and we're also looking for this angle here. What is the angle that the resultant makes with uh, vector u? Okay, so since this angle that these two uh, vectors make together is 90 degrees, then this opposite angle over here, or this adjacent angle over here, would also be 90 degrees because it's Two sides of a, two angles, adjacent angles of parallelogram add up to 180. All right, and so I'm going to transfer this measure over here, and let's use the Pythagorean theorem. So, vector, the magnitude of vector 
u plus v squared is equal to 30 squared plus 45 squared. Take the square root of both of those. And we get, I'll write it underneath here. So the magnitude of vector u plus v. I don't like the u's and v's. I wish they were different letters. All right, I should have just made them different letters. So the square root of 30 squared plus 45 squared is 54.08. So 54.1. So the magnitude is 54.1. Okay, so there's the magnitude of uh, vector u plus v. Now we just have to find angle theta. And I would go ahead and continue to use tangent in this case because we did get a, the hypotenuse that we drew here. We approximated its solution. So if we use an approximated solution to find a new solution, it could throw our final um, answer off by a, a tenth of a degree or so. So let's find theta is equal to the tangent inverse of opposite over adjacent. We're looking for angle theta. And we plug that into the calculator. And so theta is tangent inverse 30 over 45 or 2 thirds is 33.7. 33.7 degrees. So if we were to describe our solution here, let's go back to the instructions. It says give the magnitude, uh, find the sum of u plus v, give its magnitude to the nearest tenth, and give direction by specifying to the nearest degree that the angle makes with result, the, re, the angle that the resultant makes with u. Okay, so um, u plus v, a uh, vector u plus v has a magnitude of 54.1 units, whatever base units that is, and makes a 33.7 degree angle with vector u. And there would be your solution. That's a really good circle there. All right, last one. So we've been solving a lot of uh, problems so far. All of the examples that I've given you have dealt with perpendicular vectors or vectors pulling um, on an object at 90 degrees. Okay, but here when you look at the set of data here, we have result. We have vector u has a magnitude of 25 and the magnitude of v is 30 and the angle between the two vectors is 75 degrees. So now we really need to be careful when we draw this because um, if you do this, you do vector u and then you do vector v and then you say that the angle between them is 75. But if you look at it over here, so here's a vector u, right? And here's vector v. Which one of these is 75? Which one? Is it this angle 75 or this angle 75? The angle between them comes from the when they're acting on the same force. So it's the angle between their initial points. You have to find the angle starting at the initial point. So this is the angle that we're looking at here. Or we would be looking at this angle over here between the directions of the two vectors. Okay, so definitely be careful when you're using your parallelogram law and you're using an angle between two vectors that you draw the two vectors acting on the same point. Okay, and then you put the angle at that point. Okay, all right, so we're, let me erase that and redraw some pictures here. That's really critical. So those of you that are not listening to the video, you're going to get confused and that's what you get. All right. I'm just being bratty right now. So this is 25, this is vector u, and then this is 30. I'm going to make it really tall here. So that's 30 and that's vector v, and the angle between them is 75 degrees. Okay, so the resultant vector, okay, is going to be pulling to the up and pulling to the right. So where does it go and how long is it? We will extend using our parallelogram law here. Right, so this is 30 and this is 25 up here, and we are looking for that vector here. So this is u plus v, 
and we want to know what's the length or what's the magnitude of that. And then what we want to know is what is this angle here. So what I'm going to do is just pull this picture right here out and work on it. And we have to be really careful here to point out that right now, this is all I know. Because this angle, let me grab my blue pen here. This angle is 75 degrees. This angle, this little angle here, you, this angle right here, we don't know what that is. Okay, so this is angle, this is theta here. So what I need to do is use the opposite angles of my parallelogram here and find this angle, right? So if this angle over here is 75 in a parallelogram, remember? So if this is 75, then this angle over here has to be 105, right? Because alpha plus beta equals 180, right? So we'd have to do 180 minus 75 to get 105. So the angle here is 105 degrees. This is definitely not right triangle trig, okay? So let's take a look at what information we have. We're trying to find this side here, this vector, u plus v. So can we use the law of sines? Let's look. We have this side, but we don't have its opposite angle. We have this angle, but we don't have its opposite side. And we have this side, but we don't have its opposite angle. So we can't use the law of sines. We have to go to the law of cosines, right? And so this is definitely an example of side angle side. So we want to find this side. So, okay, we're going to go. Um, side vector, the magnitude of vector u plus v squared equals, um, we're going to do 25 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 25 times 30 times the cosine of 105, right? Right? I could name these if this will help you. There's A, here's B, and here's C, right? And so this would be side C. This would be side A and this would be side B. So that'd be like me saying C squared equals A, B squared plus A squared minus 2 B A cosine C. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and solve for our magnitude by taking the square root of both sides of that. And so um, we're taking the square root of that. So we'll square root, square root, pretend I square rooted the whole thing. Plug that into my calculator, 25 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 25 times 30 cosine 105. And we get 43.74, so 43.7 units long. So the magnitude, I always forget to do that, the magnitude of vector u plus v is 43.7. So there we have that measure. Now, here's our picture. I'm going to redraw it. So we have 25, we have 105, we have 30, and now we have 43.7. And what we are trying to find is theta. So it's not a right triangle, we can't use Sokotoa. And notice that we now have a pair of opposites, an angle and a side opposite each other. So we can switch to the law of cosine, law of sines. So we have this, and we're looking for the other half of side 30. We're looking for the angle. So we could say, all right, so the sine of theta is over its opposite side is equal to the sine of 105 over 43.7. And then we solve for theta. So we'll multiply both sides times 30. So sine theta equals 30 sine 105 over 43.7. And then take the sine inverse of those. Let's see if I have some room here. I do. Okay, so theta is equal to the sine inverse of all of this stuff. I'm just going to use an arrow and put parentheses. Not because I'm lazy, but because I'm efficient. That's my reasoning there. 
You guys have seen me do it enough that you know what it means. 43.7. And we get 41.5 degrees. So theta is equal to 41.5 degrees. Okay, so now let's go back and gather our information or our write our solutions. <clears throat> Find the sum of u plus v. Okay, we found that. We found that picture. We drew it. Okay, give the magnitude to the nearest tenth of u of vector u plus v. So I'm going to just write this over here. So vector u plus v has a magnitude of, my pen is not working good today, 43.7, and it makes 41.5 degree angle with vector u. And there you go. Okay, so quick reminders, quick, quick, quick. When you have an angle between two vectors that is not 90 degrees, make sure when you draw your vectors that you put that angle um, at the point where the two vectors, the, the initial point of the two vectors, okay? Not, uh, not at a, a tail to head, a head to tail situation, but a tail to tail situation, okay? So you wanna put the angle between the tails, not between a tail and a head, or between head and head, but between the tails. Okay, there you go. Simon is on camera.